Hello everybody, this is Professor De Riardi. I'm uh, ready to start another video on perfect competition and preparation for both my micro classes for their 70 point test. For one group the test is this coming Tuesday, the 25th. For the other group it's March 31st. Uh, the 70 point test has three parts. There's a concepts part. That section will be multiple choice questions a problem part which we're going to review today and a graphing part. I've made a graphing video already I'll probably make another one. Uh, this is the first problem video and uh, I just want to get through one problem in this uh, maybe I'll do another one but uh, if I can get through this one I think that's uh, I want to load it up tonight Sunday night I'm filming this on Sunday night the 23rd. Anyway I have a little bit of a thing prepared here the problem I'm using is from Mock Test 3 on shared files. Mock Test 3 has three problems. It'll open up, you'll see one, but there are actually three if you uh, scroll down the uh, page and you should practice all three of them. The more you practice, the obviously the better uh, prepared you'll be for the test. Alright, so uh, let's try to uh, start this up. I think the problems are fairly straightforward. In my past experience, students do pretty well in the problem section. Out of the 20 points, many will get 17, 18 points or better. So I'm using a problem. I think it's the second one uh, on mock test three. At any rate, for sure, at output zero, the total cost is 175, and that's how you'll recognize it. All right. The last cost is 600 at output 12. So uh, you can stop the video and make sure you have the right paper. I'm going to go through all the steps so that you can get all 20 points correct in your upcoming test. Assuming this was the problem that you actually had. All right. All these problems are assuming, of course, perfect competitively, perfectly competitive conditions for an ice cream market, uh, frisbee market, some product that is identical for the many firms that are selling it. All right? Your first task is to calculate marginal costs. That is step one. Calculate marginal costs. So let's do that. What is marginal cost? Change in total cost over change in output. And the change in output is always one. That makes it nice and easy. So the differences will give you the values you need. The way we arrange it, no marginal cost to start out at output zero, but the increase, the increase in total cost from 175 to 200 is 25. That difference is going to serve as marginal cost. The next difference, 15. The next difference, 5. So those changes are what you need. You'll notice marginal cost falls at first. That's because, just as in your homework, there's a, a region of, or an early production a period of increasing marginal returns. That doesn't last forever. Eventually the additional inputs get less efficient. And that's going to show up right here. The next one, output four, the difference between 230 and 220 is 10. So we have our first increase in marginal cost. We're going to Go the rest of the way upwards. Output level 5. 245 is the cost, though the prior one was 230, so the marginal cost must be 15. Let's go through the sequence, the remainder. 20 at 6. 25 at 7. 35 at 8. 45 at 9. 55 at 10, 65 at 11, and then obviously the last one, 110 marginal cost. So that's the whole sequence. If you get that right, you're going to get some points. Obviously we have to go a little bit farther because the question says, what is the profit maximizing level of output if the market price were 45, if the market price were 10? All right, 
There's where you need to recall. In perfect competition, price equals marginal revenue. You must use that conclusion, that unique result that happens because so many firms are selling the exact same thing. So, preparing to set that up to figure out where the uh, profit maximizing level of output is, create two more columns, one saying price is 45, one saying price is 10. Remember this is a bottom line price, a horizontal line on the graph. At all levels of output, the price is 45, so the marginal revenue is 45, price equals 45, marginal revenue is 45, just write 45 all the way down the column, and in the same way, 10. You're 80% done for this uh, first part, and now look. What output level has a marginal cost of 45 and a marginal revenue of 45? Well, that's output 9. We mark it, we highlight it. That's what you should do in the test. And then finally, when an output is, I'm sorry, when marginal cost is 10, we're just looking for 10 equals 10. Here's 10. Here's 10. If I can get that nice and uh, clear. Output 4. Output 4. Because marginal cost and marginal revenue both are 10 there. Try to highlight it. Some signal for me when I'm grading that tells me you've gotten the right answer. All right, so basically you just want to write out when price equals 45, Q equals 9, when price equals 10, Q equals 4. That gets you 5 points. Alright, since this is a dry erase board, there it goes, by the magic of dry erase. Alright, I'm going to prepare for B. B says calculate profit. That will always be the next step. Profit, just like in your accounting classes, is total revenue minus total cost. We're going to do that formula twice because we have two prices and two output levels now. So let's uh, go through it. This black pen is not doing too well. So I'll go to the blue. Profit is total revenue minus total cost. In economics class, that's always explicit costs and implicit costs. Just stay mindful, even though you're doing numbers and it looks all the same. You need to remember the importance of uh, implicit cost because remember we get Results like zero is normal. Zero, the firm is doing good. Zero, long run equilibrium for the market. All right, but total revenue is P times Q. When the price is 45, output is 9, that's 405. Minus a total cost of, check the column, 370. 370. Well, this is going to be a positive profit, that's for sure. A positive economic profit of 35. Greater than zero. From that alone, we conclude this firm is doing very well, abnormally well, exceptionally well, case one. And hopefully you have a picture in mind what that looks like. There'll be a profit box eventually to draw in cases like that, if I ask. Um, you, sure, you surely will have to recognize or draw one of those uh, case one um, graphs somewhere on the test. All right, that's one way, uh, one time through. Again, profit is total revenue minus total cost. P times Q. 
Price of 10, output 4. Total revenue, 40. Total cost, check the columns. Total cost column from the uh, test paper itself, 230. 230. Well, this is a big loss, minus 190. Though we really don't know how big, it seems big to me, considering the numbers we've used before. So our economic profit is a negative. You just got yourself five more points because you did that correctly two times. We got a case one and a loss. But what kind of loss? We don't know. The kind of loss comes up in the next question. True or false, and explain at both prices the firm will produce. Well, at case one situation, they'll produce in the short run, in the long run, they have every incentive, economically speaking, to operate. The loss, produce, we have to examine. We have to go further. And that going further involves a comparison of total revenue and total variable cost. The intuition is, well, we could use some accounting concepts like operating expenses. If the firm's revenue can cover, equal, or exceed the operating expenses, which we call total variable cost, then the firm can produce in the short run. If not, it's a shutdown. Right? So just in that little explanation, I mentioned the three losses. There's a possibility that total revenue is greater than total variable cost. That's the intermediate case. There's the possibility that the total revenue is equal to total variable cost. That's the borderline. If revenue were less than variable costs, then we'd have a shutdown. So we don't really have to do any comparison for the uh, case one situation. But uh, say when price is 10, output is 4. C says, or asks, will that produce, true or false? Will that firm in this situation produce? Let's see. Total revenue, clearly, 40. Total variable cost. Well, there's no variable cost column. How are we going to find it? The one formula besides the profit formula that you really need to know. Total cost equals fixed cost plus variable, and you already know it. All you accountants, you. If you know total cost, if you know fixed cost, you can get the variable cost. We know total cost. It's 230. Can we figure out, I'm sorry, can we figure out the fixed cost? Well, in fact, it has been provided. It's there somewhere on that cost column. In fact, it's the very first entry. If output is zero, and there's a cost of 175, well then, that must be a fixed cost. That must be an upfront cost that a firm or a farmer needs to pay in order to get the fixed resource under his control at his disposal. Any variable cost comes later. So we're just using that cost formula and the information we have to reason out what the variable cost must be. 175 from 230. 55 is what I get. And if in fact that's correct, well that is correct. And revenue is 40, we got a pretty dismal situation. Total revenue is less than total variable cost, according to what we've gotten. Yeah, because 40 is less than 55. That alone tells us this firm should shut down. Going back to the question, true or false, at both prices the firm will produce? Not at price 10. It's a shutdown.
pretty clear. If you know the steps, keep your wits about you. None of this should fool you. Okay? The only other situation that you would have gotten in this possible equality or total revenue would have been greater. There would have still been losses. That's why you're making this comparison in the first place. But the other two situations would have been a case three or a case four. This is case five shutdown. All right, the last task in a problem is to graph. In different uh, tests, I ask different things about the graph. Sometimes I have you do the first one. Sometimes I have you do the second one. Let's see. Let's see what this one says. Draw both cases fully. Well. That's a lot of work. I usually don't ask that, to be very honest. Uh, and, and to be, I kind of recollect using this in a test and telling people just to win the price is 10. So uh, let's do it that way. Let's draw the shutdown case, get that squared away, and uh, we'll use another opportunity to, uh, to draw a case one. So D, see if I can get this going. D. There we go. D. Draw price equals 10, Q equals 4. All right. Ideally, you should draw two pictures. One that represents the big market, the market for Frisbees or the market for ice cream cones or whatever. You want to convey the fact that the supply and demand, the forces of the supply and demand, set the price, 10, account for all the market output, and then create the bottom line price for all the other firms. So while the other graph has all the details, where you were in most of the points, keep in the habit of drawing that first picture for the market and designating 10 as the market price. All right, so here's 10 again. Here's the bottom line price. It also represents marginal revenue, bottom line price, right? So this is a picture for a typical firm in this market. There's many of them, but this is a representation for all of them. Label all the axes. Let's see what we got. Marginal revenue, we need a marginal cost. Let's see if this is working here. Ah, marginal cost. Just do it. And the most important point on the picture, clearly where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. We want to say, aha, the output is four. So I'll be looking for the 10, the 4. That's fundamental. Now you want to illustrate the shutdown. How can I get a shutdown out of all of this? The loss is severe. This revenue box, 10 times 4, that's revenue, is not enough to